Hey everyone, how we doing? Uh, welcome to uh, Yoga with Dave number 56. I say it every week, but where do these weeks go? Where are they all going? Um, so if, you've, uh, if you're joining for the first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. Fantastic. If you're doing your 56 class, I'm sure there's loads of you out there, isn't there? I've done 56 classes. Maybe not. <laughs> but you might have done a good amount. I know that there, is, there is a lot of you out there that have done a good amount of yoga. Um, so uh, welcome to all of those people as well. Welcome, everybody. Uh, as the sun shines here in Leicester, the sun always shines in Leicester. Remember that? Mm, probably doesn't. <laughs> all right. So um, just thinking about your yoga practice, thinking about wellness in general, at the Virtual Village Hall, um, are in a survey at the moment. You might have seen that online. Um, and the survey is just about you know, what they've provided so far. How has that been for you? You know, all of these classes that are on, it's such a varied amount of classes on on this weekly basis. How have they impacted your health? How have they impacted your physical health? How have they impacted your mental health? How have they enabled you to stay connected in this virtual way, you know, since the classes started last January? So, you know, what an amazing thing that's happened since January, even though, you know, probably, especially last year, a lot of our um, movements were restricted, especially the first part of the year. And, you know, how has the Virtual Village Hall really impacted you? And how has it helped you in so many different ways? It could have done, you know. Um, and then looking forward, how is the Virtual Village Hall going to continue to do that? Um, so, you know, there's all of these things here which are, um, you know, really relevant. And we're thinking about what's going to happen in the future. So suggestions and ideas, um, all of those things are really important to us. Um, so please fill in this survey. Um, it's online. You can access it there. Uh, and then the Virtual Village Hall will be able to tailor all of these offerings for you. So that's a beautiful thing. So I've mentioned that at the start. Excuse my phone ringing there. I've just turned the ringer off. See? <laughs> that's another good thing isn't it you know in ter terms of mental health in terms of us trying to you know even though this is a technological based yoga class you know we're trying to kind of move back from our screens sometimes but it can also be a very positive way that we use technology as well you know so that that's that's really great all right so today we're going to run through a nice varied yoga practice thought we'd do we'll have a look at balancing today because we don't do a lot of balancing you know, as we all get older, we kind of lose that ability to balance. Um, and it's important, isn't it? You know, as we go through our daily lives, you know, we want to try and remain as balanced as possible, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, all of these things, uh, but more about the physicality of balancing. So we'll have a look at that today. And some of you might be thinking, oh, no, not balancing. I really don't want to do balancing uh, because it's tough. But remember, as we go through these postures, um, you can always use the wall. You know, you can sit for some of them as well. And some of the balances we'll do, we'll do down on the floor. So we'll kind of build them up. But it's not going to be 100% um, worth of balancing. It's going to be nice and uh, it's going to be nice and measured. All right. So find a comfortable seat on your mat. I'm just going to make a, a couple of suggestions. And I'm going to make a couple of uh, uh, just adjustments here before we get started so as you sit down on your mat draw some length into your spine let's just move this camera here and then i'm going to go back onto my mat so here we are again at the space to breathe collective in leicester this is a cooperative yoga collective which i'm involved in um, so if you're ever in leicester then feel free to uh to join us at any point all right okay that's all looking quite good yeah i like that it's a little bit on an angle. It must be on the floorboard, which is a bit odd. So draw some length into your spine and then find somewhere just comfortable for your hands. So you might have the hands, palms down. You might have the hands, palms up. You can bring the hands into your lap. You can put the hands on your head. <laughs> I really don't mind what you do with, the, with, with, with your hands. Um, I just want you to be really comfortable. And I'm thinking about that for all of your postures today. Try and be as comfortable as you can be. Forget what it looks like. It really doesn't matter. As long as you're not hurting yourself, that's true yoga. So we're just here to pay attention, to pay attention to our physicality, our physical body, pay attention to our breath, and just get out of that kind of like thinking and that patterning sometimes where we're thinking about the future, we're thinking about the past. We want to spend more time. There's a lot of hand movements going on today, isn't there? We want to spend more time here at our heart center in the present moment. All right. Okay. 
If you feel comfortable, just close your eyes. So your spine is long, your shoulders are relaxed, your hands are in a comfortable position. And then just begin to connect in with the breath, your breath. So probably for the first time today, just notice how the breath feels in the body. And if you can, inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the nose. And you just work at a pattern and a depth and a length that feels good for you. So me, I'm inhaling for about to a count of four. And I'm exhaling for a count of four. Yours might be longer, it might be shorter, doesn't matter. And then from here, just take two more complete rounds of breath. And then at the end of that exhale, then you can very gently open your eyes. Nice, really, really nice. And then just check in with yourself. How does that feel? Do you feel a little bit you know, different in terms of your physicality? Do you feel more connected in with your body? Do you feel calmer? Do you feel more energized? There's lots of things that can be going on here. Um, if you're sat on something, you know, I always sit on something. And it's always a nice little trick. It just helps you kind of raise the hips up. If you were doing that, like a cushion or a block, then you know, just remove it. Have a little wriggle around. This can help. You can bring the legs out you can now bring the other shin in front. Because it's not the most uh, uh, comfortable thing sometimes, is it? Like sitting on the floor, it can feel a little bit uh, alien to us. You know, we're, we're used to sitting in chairs in the West, aren't we? So sitting on the floor can feel, um, you know, a little bit defeating sometimes, especially when a yoga teacher says, this is called easy pose, and you think, this doesn't feel very easy for me. So press your fingertips into the floor, and then lengthen your spine again. Just have a little move around, move through the shoulders, Maybe just move the shoulders from side to side. And then from here, take an inhale, sweep the arms up into the air. As you exhale, bring your hands down through heart center. So we'll do that two more times. Inhaling up, exhaling down, working with the breath. Always concentrating on the breath. Inhaling up and then exhaling down. And then we're just going to do a little twist. So let's do this. Bring the arms out. So they're kind of bent at the elbows so you can be here. Then twist to the right hand side, inhale to center, twist to the left, inhale to center, twist to the right, inhale to center, twist to the left, inhaling, exhaling. You know, you can have the arms straight, you can bend into the elbows, don't think about this too much. Next time you exhale and you come to the right, bring the left hand on the right knee, press the right fingertips just down behind your spine. So your spine is really long here, so you're not sitting back like this, or you're not kind of hunched forward like this. So press into the fingertips, take a nice, beautiful, deep inhale. As you exhale, twist over to the right if you've not there, got there already. So inhaling, finding length, and then exhaling in into your twist. So feeling this beautiful stretch down the left-hand side. Inhale to find length, massaging the internal organs. Exhale into your twist. From here, just simply inhale, come back to center. Bring the fingertips down by your hips, recenter yourself here, and then just swap sides. So right hand, left knee. Actually, mine kind of comes on the inside of my left thigh, and I'm just kind of encouraging that thigh open a bit. Inhale to find length. Exhale into your twist. And do more, two more like that. Inhale to find length. Exhale into your twist. No need to move the head too much. We're going to do that in a moment. One more time. Inhale to find length. And then exhale into your twist. Inhale, come all the way back to center. And then with the hands just resting nice and gently on the floor, just begin to circle the head. Just gently rotating the head in one direction. It doesn't matter which way you started. Maybe the eyes are closed. 
Try and soften your jaw. Your spine is nice and long still. And you're just making circles a speed and a depth that feels good for you. So don't think it's got to be, it's got to be fast and it's got to be big. It can be slow. It can be small. You just begin to pay attention what's going on. And then you come back to center and then just come back the other way. You find that softness in the jaw, softness in the cheeks, the skin around the eyes, the forehead, all the way up to the crown of the head. Hands are relaxed. Breathing deeply here as you go. So try not to hold the breath. Nice. Slowly bring the head all the way back to center. And then a full exhale. And then bring the feet out. So lean back into the hands before you do that. So the fingertips are spread forward. Lean back into your arms. Bring your feet out. Maybe, you know, you really need to do this. Give the legs a good shake. Maybe just tap the legs out. You know, give the thighs a bit of a tap. Down into the calves. Maybe flex the feet. And give the chest a bit of a tap into the shoulders. You know, whatever you need to do. Maybe the back. Just bring that aliveness into the body. And then... Place the soles of the feet onto the floor and lean back into the hands. And then just windscreen wiper the legs from side to side. Ah, nice. Feels good, doesn't it? Feels really good. So just moving from side to side here. And just carry on like that, just for a few more rounds as I make a little adjustment into the camera. Um, so inhaling and exhaling as you go. Looks a little bit better. Nice. You've got a good view of this beautiful floor that we've got here. Ah, nice. All right. Slowly bring the legs all the way back to center. And then from here, what we're going to do is we're going to flip onto our fronts and we're going to come into tabletop position. So nice and simple. Whatever way that feels good for you. I'll just do a little bit of cleaning of my mat. And then you set yourself up in tabletop position. So your spine is neutral here. Spread out through the fingers. Spread through the fingers. Press your tops of the feet into the floor. Cat and cow. So take an inhale, drop the belly down, lift the head and the heart. So that's the movement. As you exhale, you round the spine. You see that? Really rounded. Inhale forward. Exhale round. Inhale forward. Exhale round. And then just get into a rhythm that suits you. Always inhaling forward, dropping the belly down, lifting the head and the heart, spine elongates. As you exhale, tucking the belly back towards the spine, separate the shoulder blades. Arms are always nice and strong. So the arms are kind of like lengthened. There's no bend in the elbows. Inhaling. Exhaling. Inhaling. Exhaling. Do two more complete rounds. And then a nice deep inhale, come all the way back to center. And then see if you can exhale this time through the mouth. To make it audible so you can hear it. One more time like that. Nice deep inhale. And then your fullest exhale. Beautiful. From here, spread out through the fingers. Just step your right foot back. Press into your right toes. And then really find that length all the way down the right hand side of the body. So you have, where do you feel it? I feel it into my calves, my calves, if I was American. <laughs> nice. And then maybe just lift the foot. Then you can do little circles in the hips. Maybe lift the leg a bit higher. Drop it down. Swing the leg out. Have a little play around. How does the hip feel? And then just swap that out. So come to the left side or if you went left side first, go to the right. Then you're just swapping the leg out. Pressing into the toes, spreading out through your fingers. Always keep that beautiful spread through your fingers. Press the base and the knuckle of the fingers down into the floor. The fleshy parts of the thumb are really activated. Maybe lift the leg. What's going on with the hip? Maybe lift it up, swing it from side to side. Little circles, big circles. Nice, and then come back to center. And then from here, lengthen out through the right leg again, bend into the right knee, and then just bring the leg up and down. Nice and slowly. And you get into the thighs, into the hamstrings, into the quads, into the glutes. Just moving the leg up and down. And then from here, lengthen the right leg out. So this is the first balance we're going to do. So this is a balance, isn't it? Because you might already feel a little bit wobbly. 
Maybe have a look. Say hello to your leg. Hello, right leg. <laughs> so you're not too high, you're not too low, your hips in line. Imagine you're pressing the sole of the foot into the wall behind you. In fact, if you have got a wall behind you and you're that close, press your sole of the foot into it so you feel that activation. Stay here if you want. Sweep the left arm out if you're feeling frisky. <laughs> Breathe deep here. So lengthen out through the right leg. Stretch out through the left arm. Keep breathing. If you feel a little bit wobbly, this is one of the nice things that we'll look at with balances. You find a gaze point. It's called a dristi in yoga. So you're just looking down at one spot. It really helps you. Little connection here at the navel center. That will help stabilize you as well. And it will really begin to firm up your core. So all yoga starts from the navel center. One more deep inhale, wherever you are. And then a full exhale, bring everything down to the mat. What you're gonna do now is you're gonna split the knees nice and wide, or I invite you to do this. Bring the big toes together, bring the sit bones back onto the heel. So you might start here and then lie all the way down onto the floor. You can always bring the head onto the hands. You can bring the head onto fists, whatever works for you. And then just breathe down the whole of the spine. Breathe into the back body. Deep inhales, full exhales. Beautiful. And then from here, just walk the hands back towards the knees. Press yourself back to that tabletop position. Nice. So we'll do the other side. How did we start it? Bent into the left knee and then just begin to lift the leg up and down. So you can go at you know, a speed that feels good for you. You might just be lifting the leg a tiny bit. Maybe you want to be a little bit more rigorous with the movement. But remember, it's just about finding something that works for you. It's an exploration yoga, you know? It's not about what it looks like, it's everything that it feels like, but you are matching the movements to where your body is today. You're not pushing it. So try not to strain and think you've got to get somewhere in particular. You really don't. From here, lengthen out through the left leg. Maybe do that little trick. Look down the left leg. Imagine you're pressing the sole of the left foot into the wall behind. Spread out through the fingers. So, you know, if my hands are kind of like beginning to curl up and my elbows begin to bend, I lose the kind of the form and then I'll start to wobble around. Gaze to the front edge of your mat as you sweep the right arm forward. This pose is called sunbird. Ooh, it's a good one. Breathe deeply here. Lengthen out through the right arm. The right fingertips are activated. Maybe you look down the right fingertips. Or if you're struggling with the balance a little bit, look down to the top edge of your mat. But find your gaze in one spot. Lengthen out through the left leg. One more deep inhale. And then as you exhale, bring everything down onto your mat. This time with the knees together, push the sit bones back onto the heels. Close knee child's pose. Bring the forehead down to the floor. And if the forehead does come to the floor, bring the hands up by the feet. If it doesn't and it's floating like this, then you can just bring your head onto your hands where the hands are out in front. And then just breathe. Deep inhales here, full exhales. Maybe give the bottoms of your feet a little massage. Breathe in deeply. Maybe just softening the gaze or completely closing the eyes and drop deeply into your practice. Beautiful, nice. Bring the hands back in front of the knees or just by the side. Or if you're really strong in the core, you don't have to use the hands. You can just come all the way up. Make sure you don't strain the back as you do that. And then you're sat on your heels. How does this feel? This is a nice passive stretch into the heels. And we'll do this. Spread out through the fingertips. Come onto your toes. So you're right on the toes. So if you're tight in the feet, you're going to hate this pose. <laughs> I don't like it. One little bit. Toe stretch. Bring the heels back. And then you just sit in here. You can always grab onto opposite elbows. Helps you lengthen the spine. And then just take a few nourishing breaths here. Nourishing, Dave. Whew. It's painful. Not for everybody though, some people love it. I certainly don't, I'm a runner and I really don't like to stretch my toes out. One more deep inhale because I'm sweating. <laughs> and then a full exhale, come down onto your mat, tap your feet out, bring a little bit of life back into your feet. Nice. 
<laughs> really nice. Let's get a little bit more into the shoulders. So have a look at your knees, look at your hips, make sure the knees and the hips are in line. You've got this line. What you don't want to be doing in this next pose is coming forward or coming back. So you want this right angle. And then just walk the hands forward. This is melting heart pose. Bring your forehead down onto the floor or the chin, depending on where you are. But keep the forearms activated. So, you know, you don't want to bring the forearms down onto the floor. You can always walk the hands wider if you feel very, very tight in the shoulder blades and the upper back. So we'll all look really different in this pose. Don't turn your head like I'm doing. I'm just going to be checking in and just seeing if the camera's good. So just gaze down or close the eyes. Melt your heart center down towards the floor and breathe deeply. Just spending a little bit longer here in melting heart pose. It's a really nice way to open the shoulders, open the upper back. Keep that spread out through the fingertips. Press into the palms, maybe lift the fingers. Activate through the hands, active hands here. And then bring each of the fingertips down onto the floor. Very, very gently, walk the hands back and then come back to a tabletop position. Nice and slowly. Beautiful work, really nice. From here, we're gonna tuck the toes under. We're gonna come into our first downward facing dog. So lift the hips. Come into your first downward facing dog. Separate the feet about hip width apart. Make sure your feet are not too long. So we don't want to be like here. You know, see this a lot where the down dog is too long. You kind of like here. You know, try and step the feet in a little bit. And then keep a generous bend in the knees. You see how my spine elongates. If you're tight like me in the hamstrings, you know, if you're going to be doing this and then you've got this bow in the lower spine to do this where the knees are bent. Because we're not all built with incredibly flexible bodies. And remember, yoga is not all about flexibility. <laughs> all right, one more deep inhale. And your fullest exhale. Then really gently, just walk the hands back. See if you can do this. Walk the hands back, walk the hands back. Keep them coming back. And then stand in a standing forward fold. Feet hip width apart, nice generous bend in the knees. Ugh, and then just hang down. Grab onto opposite elbows, sway from side to side. But make sure that this back part of the body, the lower spine is protected. And you can do that by bending the knees and then just swaying and bringing a little bit of movement into the toes, into the heels, the sides of the feet, whatever feels good for you. It's your practice. And no one can tell you that it's wrong. Because <laughs> it ain't. As long as you're not hurting yourself, it's perfect and you're perfect and you're in exactly the right place right now. Nice. Send yourself some love and some respect, some compassion. Bring the hands down onto the floor, bend into your knees and then roll all the way up. Come up to stand for the first time. Halfway through the class pretty much and then here we are. We're just standing at the top edge of our mat. So walk to the top edge as I move the camera again. Just because we're standing, we'll have a little bit more of a movement on the mat. Beautiful. So come into your Tadasana, your mountain pose. We could probably have some lights on here, couldn't we? Let's do this. Bring your hands to heart center. Beautiful. Nice. And then just pause here. Mountain pose. Adapted with the hands at heart center. Have a look at your feet. Make sure your feet are lined up. So a lot of these things are just those, you know, um, uh, basics of yoga, you know, foundational postures. So the feet are lined up. They can be together. They can be hip width apart. Nice. From here, take an inhale. Sweep the arms up. We've been working on sun salutations over the year. As you exhale, forward fold. See my knees? They bend because then I can fold in nice and deep and safely. Take an inhale. Come up halfway, lengthen your spine. As you exhale, bring your hands down, step one foot back, step the other foot back, and then take an inhale and lengthen here into your plank. And then as you exhale, drop the knees, lower all the way to the floor. So you're gonna do that drive, just kind of internally, sorry, externally rotating the elbow points forward. So the kind of the inside of the elbows, you just kind of do that little turn and that allows you then Keep the elbows tucked by your body and then you lower all the way to the floor. So you're lying on your belly, press the tops of the feet into the floor, a little bit of weight into the hands, not a lot. Inhale into your cobra. See my elbows are tucked in. As you exhale, lift the hips, come into downward facing dog. 
two breaths here. Remember the bend in the knees, if that feels good, deep inhale. Full exhale. Bend the knees, hinge the hips up between the hands. And on this first one, just do little steps. So maybe one, two, three, four, come to the top of your mat. Inhale to find some length. So lengthen the spine as much as you can. Exhale, fold in low. Press into your feet. Inhale, come up to stand. Exhale, frame in the hands at heart center. Nice. Let's do one more like that. Inhale up. Exhale, fold in low. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, your hands come down. Step one foot back, step the other foot back. Inhale here into your plank. Exhale, drop the knees, lower all the way to the floor. So coming into your back bend, cobra. Inhale, press the tops of the feet into the floor. Raise the chest, roll the shoulders back. Exhale, spread out through the fingers, lift the hips. Downward facing dog. Nice. Deep inhale. Full exhale. One more like that. Deep inhale. And a full exhale. Beautiful. Drop the knees down onto your mat and then just come to sit back onto your heels. And then I'll show you where we're going to go next. So we're going to do a little bit of work with uh, some balancing. And we're going to start with kind of some strength-based balances. So it's a nice way to kind of get into the body and kind of like the brain takes a little bit of time to catch up sometimes when we're doing these balances. So this is going to be the first one we're going to do. And it's going to be side plank. And you might think to yourself, oh man, I don't want to do side plank. Uh, but I'm going to show you lots of variations. So normal plank, let's all do this together. So come on to all four, spread out through the fingers. And a normal plank, step one foot back, step the other foot back. We're sometimes a little bit too high, so we press into the outer edges of the feet. So here's our plank. Yeah? But the knees are lifted, but you can always be here with the knees down, tops of the feet on the floor. So whatever works for you. So it's a balance, isn't it? It's strength-based. Then exhale, just come back to sit on the heels. So we do that in a lot of our transitions, in some salutations. Plank is a really good pose because it helps us connect to the core. That's where our balance, a lot of our balance is. And it also builds a lot of strength in the upper body and in the legs as well. So it's an all round beautiful pose. So when we come into side plank, well, you know, <laughs> you're gonna get it. You're on your side in plank. So what does it look like? So we come into plank, I'll show you it first of all. And then you place the left hand into the center of your mat, you roll over, you stack the feet, and then you're here in side plank, all right? So that's kind of side plank, but it's quite hard. I remember the first time that I came into side plank in a yoga class, and I, I tell you what, I was like this. I was kind of like collapsing, and my, my arm was giving way, and it was like, it was really hard for me because I was really, um, I just wasn't used to using my upper body. So let's do this. Come on to all fours, and then step the feet back into plank. Then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna lower the left knee down. So your left knee and your left shin is on the floor. And then see if you can come on the inside of your right foot. So the left knee is down, the inside of your right foot is like just on the floor, and then you've lengthened the right leg. And then you're just gonna bring your arm up. So you're here, you know? So this is a variation of it. This is the first one. So there's still a lot of work going on in the left-hand side. You've got practice of like lengthening up through this top arm and you're finding length all the way down through the side of the body. So there's one option so that you can do that. Your kind of preferred option for a lot of people is you step back into plank, come onto the side of your feet and then you stack the feet side by side. So you've got this option. So you see we're on the blade edges, outer edge of one foot, inner edge of the other. And then you've got the feet stacked by side by side. You can go nice and long or you can just stack them side by side. So you've got this option. So you can take a couple of breaths here together and then exhale, bring everything down to the mat. So you can come into either one of those poses again, or if you wanted to, you can go for, I guess the hardest version where you step both feet back and then see if you can stack the right foot on top of the left. So you see my feet are stacked and then you lift the hand up. This is probably harder, but you're really lengthening out through the top arm. You think about both sides of the waist are long. So then you're not sort of sagging, you're not lifting up too high. One more deep inhale, and then exhale, bring everything down to your mat. Split the knees wide, 
and come into child's pose and just breathe it out here. Nice. And then when you're ready, just come back to center. I'm going to swap sides just so you can see me and I've not got my back turned to you. So this time, right hand into the center of your mat, step back into your plank position, right hand into the center, and then maybe here, you know, maybe here with the bottom knee down, maybe here with the feet stacked. So I'll give you choices. Here's with the feet stacked. This is probably in between. This is when we're really beginning to work on the shape and you really find that spread out through the fingertips, lengthen up through the top arm, or you can always be here, a little bit tricky. And if you really want to funk it up, you can always lift a leg. You know, you can always grab hold of the foot, which I'm not going to do today. So you can play around with these balances and strength-based balances. Wherever you are, take two more breaths. Beautiful. And then exhale, bring everything down to the mat. Split the knees wide. <sighs> Sink everything down. And then just breathe deeply here. Really nice work. Beautiful. From here, press yourself back to all fours. And then lift the hips. Come into your downward facing dog. Walk the hands back towards the feet again. Just to come back to a standing position. From here, you're just going to uncurl. So with the knees bent, roll all the way up. Come to stand. And then we find ourselves just stood on our mats. Nice work, everyone. Really beautiful. All right, we're going to step it up a little bit. I'm just going to move the camera just slightly. So now we're going to come into tree pose. So we're kind of, now we're working on more of a pure balance. So a couple of the balances we've worked on so far, one of them was sunbird, you know, so there's activation going on. You know, there's a lot of kind of like strength going on in the legs and in the arms, but we're ultimately working with our gaze and we're working with our dristy and our balance. Then we've just done one which requires quite a lot of strength, but there's variations that you can go. And then this one is more about just engagement of the body, but also it's about finding a gaze point. So remember I talked earlier on about a dristy. So I always try and look about a foot or two foot in front of me. And then I'm just going to gaze at that one spot. I'm lucky because I've got a nice knotted wooden floor here. So I can pick a knot and then I'm going to look at it. So tree pose, feet about hip width apart. All right. Stay really relaxed in the face. That's going to be important for you as well. So let's do it in stages. Spread out for your left toes and then lift up your right foot and then just place your right toes and then your right ankle on your left ankle. And then you can bring the hands to heart center. Try and open the hip out as much as you can. So you're externally rotating this right hip out and then gazing down at one spot. So this is tree. And then you can just bring the legs back to center. Maybe relax the hands, give them a shake. Let's do the other side. So spread out through the right toes. Really find the activation through the right hand side of the body. And then left foot, just on the toes. Maybe open that left hip out. So again, that external rotation of the left hip. And then just breathe in deeply here. Nice. And then bring it back to center and then give the legs a good shake. So you might want to stay there. That might be where you want to be. Or we can come to the next stage. So we're going to go right foot. So lengthen out through the left hand side. And then this time, place the right foot on the car. Do not do this where the foot is on the knee because this causes the knee to be pushed out and it can cause real problems. So resist that temptation because <laughs> you see it a lot. You know, when you see uh, people in adverts or you see uh, yoga being done on TV and you usually go, no, they've got, they've got the foot in the wrong place. <laughs> so you're going to place the right foot onto the left calf and then you can bring the hands. And remember, just your gaze point. You can always lengthen up through the arms. You know, you can sway around a little bit. It's been windy, hasn't it, the last few weeks? So maybe just feel the flow. Give your branches a nice little shake out. Open that right hip out as much as you can. So you're kind of pressing the sole of the right foot into your calf. You're pressing the calf into the sole of the right foot. Beautiful, everyone. And then come back to center and then just give it a shake out. Have a look at your feet. Find your gaze point. And then left foot onto your right thigh. And then just find your balance here. Maybe bring the arms up, sway it around. 
You, know, you can always play around with these poses. Sometimes swaying around can help. Maybe looking at me swaying around is not helping. So you're just gazing down in front of your mat. Make sure the jaw is nice and relaxed. And then, here we go. Give the legs a good shake out. So like when we did in our um, side plank pose, I gave you options. So again, if you want to go to one of those first two options, that's great. Remember with all of these, if you've got a wall, you can always do this kind of thing. And then you just rest in, and then you might take the hand away. You might bring the fingertip back onto the wall to make sure that you're always safe. This last one, you're going to bring the right foot into the left thigh. It's a little bit more difficult, but the same thing. You want to be pressing the sole of the right foot into the thigh and the thigh into the sole of the right foot. So you can bring the leg up. You might start here, then grab hold of the right ankle with the left hand. And then you see you just place the right foot into the left thigh. And then you can bring the hands to heart center. So I'm really pressing the foot into the thigh. The thigh is being pressed into the foot. If you wobble around a little bit, that's cool. If you want to bring the arms up, that's even better. Have a little play around. Actually, I say it's even better. It's not even better. It's just an option. Nice. Gaze at one spot. Beautiful. One more deep inhale. And then a full exhale. Bring the right leg down. Give it a shake. And then from here, we're just going to come to the other side. So activate through the right foot. Maybe lift up through the left leg. Grab the foot, place it into the inside of the right thigh. And then before you even remove the foot, press the thigh into the foot, the foot into the thigh. Bring your hands to heart center. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. If you fall out, that's great because it just means that you're really working and balancing and you're getting used to it. Maybe bring the arms up. What happens here when you sway around? bring the hands down and then when you're ready you can lift the knee shake it out and then give the legs a good shake so we think about our balancing i'll just come closer to the camera just have a little chat with you about balancing so we think about our balancing and we think uh it's really easy to be defeated by balancing because you do it and you go oh that was so difficult it's probably one of the big differences that i've seen in my yoga practice since i've been practicing yoga the last six or seven years you know my my strength has built up quite a lot. My flexibility, yeah, of course, I'm a lot more flexible than I used to be, um, but I'm never going to be my, you know, Mr. Flexible. That's just not who I am. But I find that, you know, in terms of balancing and engagement, um, I've really found quite a lot of difference there, you know? Um, but when you first start balancing and when you first start building this strength in the body, it can feel a little bit defeated. But Regular steady practice, oh my word, it's amazing, you know? So that's something that you can work on time and time again. All right, let's just do one more balancing exercise and then we'll come into Shavasana because you've worked really hard today. So just come up and then we're going to do a pose called dancer pose. Sounds good, doesn't it? So dancer pose is um, probably do it from the side. Is it going to be better from the side? I can probably move. Ultimately, what you're going to do is you're going to lift up your right leg and then you're going to, with your right palm, grab inside of your left foot. So you don't want to grab on the outside, turn your palm out and then grab the inside, sorry, of your right foot. So I'll show you what it looks like from here. So bend into the leg and then instead of going here and grabbing my foot, I'm going to go here and grab my foot. So on the inside, so you turn the palm out. All right. So this is dancer pose. So that's going to be the first bit. I think I've explained it well enough. So find your balance, bend into the right knee, and then just grab hold of the ankle or the foot on the inside. Nice. Lift up the left arm. And you might want to stay here. This is all about balance. You might be wobbling around. That's all right. If you wanted to, you can kick the foot into the hand, and then you just begin to rotate the body forward. But it's not about how far you come down. Probably try and keep the knees pretty much together. Make sure the knee doesn't go too wide and then you can kick the foot a bit higher a bit higher you might get to here you might get higher you might start wobbling around <laughs> you might have fallen out if you've fallen out just come straight back in there's enough time spread out through the fingers so try not to go too low one more deep inhale and then exhale bring everything down and give it a good shake it's a tough one isn't it 
one more time. Let's come to the other side. So bend into the left knee, and then with the left hand, just grab inside on the foot, on the ankle. Try and keep the knees together. Lift up through the right arm, spread out through the right toes. Find your gaze point, and then just tip the body forward. Spread out through the fingers. Breathe deeply here. Nice. Breathe in deeply. Maybe kick the foot a bit higher. Maybe have a little wobble around. That's all right. It's all good. One more deep inhale. And then exhale. Bring everything down. Lift the knee. Shake the legs out. Beautiful work, everyone. And then come to lie down on your mat. Shavasana. Let's spend two or three minutes here. Amazing work. Bring the feet out nice and wide. Palms face up. And then just breathe deeply. Let all of that amazing work just integrate into the body. And balancing can be quite exhausting, you know, it can be quite tiring. So give yourself this last couple of minutes just to let all of that amazing work integrate, and you'll be amazed. If you just practice the balancing, how the brain just gets it, and it's amazing how quickly you can learn. How it helps us in our daily lives. Beautiful. From here, just begin to bring a little bit of life back into the body. Feel free to stay in your Shavasana if you want to, but otherwise just wriggling out the fingers and the toes. Hug one knee into the chest, hug the other knee into the chest. Make sure the spine feels good here. Roll over to one side and then when you're ready, push yourself up to a seated position. I'm just going to shuffle myself forward. You guys get nice and comfortable. Nice work. And then bring the hands back where we started the class. The hands are on the knees. You're breathing deeply. Maybe close the eyes. Place the left hand on the heart and then the right hand on the left hand. And then just notice the effects of your practice. Feel your heart beating away. Notice all the ways that you nourish yourself, all of the ways that you look after yourself, the time you dedicate to your personal wealth and well-being and growth. And you can keep the hands here at heart center and then just bow your head down and just appreciating yourself finally. And then maybe just say namaste. Namaste. Thanks so much, everybody. That's fantastic work that you've done today. A little bit varied with the, uh, with the balancing. And remember the survey that I talked about at the start. If you can get to fill that in, you get five minutes, then then please do that. And then, you know, we can tailor all of these classes to exactly what you want and keep this online community really, really vibrant because community is where it all is, isn't it? You know, that's where we find our meaning. That's where we find our connection. And whether that be in person or online, virtually, it all has a massive amount of value in our lives, especially now. So keep connecting, keep your yoga practice going, everything else that you're doing at the Virtual Village Hall. Um, and I will see you guys very, very soon. I'll see you next week. All right. Take care now. Bye-bye.